And I think this is a, a tip or a strategy that most of us don't know or haven't had a lot of time practicing. And when you're good with this, it's unbelievable how effective it can be and how much what it provides to your special someone if you're on the opposite end. It makes you so validated. Hey, thank you for coming. Welcome to The Love Shack. So let's move on to number three, which is sincerely asked questions are the powerhouse of communication. Yes, indeed they are, because here's what questions can do for you. They provide you with an opportunity to invite someone into the conversation. An example of is of this is, you look upset, would you be willing to share with me what's coming up for you? Question on the end is the invitation in. Instead of saying what we would typically do, which is, oh, you're upset again? Are you upset? Are you going to tell me about it this time? That's a statement. That's not a question. So questions sincerely asked are invitations into a conversation. We could be having a conversation and a dialogue about a myriad of things. And if I wanted to know and understand or invite you into what it is I was thinking, you know, sharing, I share. And then I say, what comes up for you about that? Is there any thoughts and feelings that are coming up for you that you want to share with me at this point in time? Or I would love to know what's going on for you now. Would you be willing to share it? Those are great examples of putting a question on the end of a statement and they become an invitation into the conversation. Yeah. And those are open-ended and those are beautiful because only the person that you're asking knows the answer. You don't know the answer. So it's going to also help us stay present and listen because we don't know the answer. Powerful coaches, the best ones in the world and whatever their area of expertise is and their mastery are the ones, in my humble opinion, that ask the greatest questions that are open-ended of their person they're working with. Hmm. They're, well, they're masters at it. Well, remember, what's our pursuit in communication? Understanding. understanding. So if you don't have your person sharing their thoughts and feelings, they're not going to understand. You're not going to seek that understanding. Now, listen, understanding happens when I share me with you and when I listen to when you share with me. That creates the understanding we need. It really doesn't matter what the circumstances are that we're trying to solve and understand. What we're really wanting is the way that those circumstances made me feel. Those are the things that we're after and that we're pursuing in the level of understanding instead of me just firing off what I believe to be true when a myriad of things happen. We can get to what the other person was thinking and what it is they were feeling at the time this went down. And that's going to tell us a lot more about where we need to go from here than arguing about how they dressed the child or how they took the trash out or why they didn't get to dinner or why they're sitting on the couch and I think they should be helping or why you spent the money or these are the circumstances and what was driving that emotionally underneath the surface or how did those experiences and circumstances cause you to feel? That's what we want to understand. That's the understanding that we're pursuing. And questions help us get to the heart of the matter in a way that we don't sacrifice the safety by attacking or shutting down or leveraging the situation altogether. It also is going to help you create remedies for what it is you want to do or try new in the relationship as far as, okay, we've got the understanding. Now, what do we want to do with it? This is where we can say, I'd like to toss in a few ideas. Would you mind? Or I'd like to know what you're thinking right now. Would you share? There's an invitation to lay ideas and strategies and remedies on the table for what we could try next. This is also really helpful when we're putting together agreements, right? I'd like to agree to this. Would that work for you? There's that question again. I'm feeling really upset about what's being talked about right now. Would you give me a minute so that I can just collect myself? I'm asking for help and support. I'm willing to be open to giving help and support so that we can achieve our goal of communication. And that's why questions become the powerhouse of communication to help us create that ebb and flow. Anything you guys want to add about that? No, I mean, and I think this is a tip or strategy that most of us don't know or have haven't had a lot of time practicing. And when you're good with this, it's unbelievable how effective it can be and how much what it provides to your special someone if you're on the opposite end. It makes you so validated that you would take the time to ask me that quality of a question that only I know about. To me, that's all your greatest demonstration that you're really, and as my brother would say, bring, then that would lead to an experience of connection. You know, when we feel like we're being asked in a genuine manner, we're going to feel more I would say, much more connected to whomever is asking that question, right? We don't think to ask a question. We don't realize how powerful they are, number one. And number two, they create a lot of anxiety in us, especially if we're the ones asking the question, because do you really want the answer? Do you really want to know what they're thinking and feeling? It would behoove you to, but we negate the importance of that because we can get so lost in, all of us can, it's all about me and what I'm feeling and I'm trying to ease my pain and so is the other person. And so it's like this idea of, look, everybody's needs can be met 
met, it doesn't have to be at the exception of one or the right. other. It's give first and give fast, because if I get to a place where I can give you the understanding first, then you're going to be more open to understanding me. Right. And we can both get our needs met here. Asking a question is a great way. And then you've got to do that emotional validation, that push up piece because you might hear some things that you find difficult to hear, but better you hear them and understand them and ask questions about them so that we can change the trajectory of where we're going. Otherwise, we're just going to continue in our pursuit to the race to the bottom. Those are literally your two choices. I know I've shared this recently on one of our podcasts, but I think it behooves us to share it. It wasn't all that long ago where I was a hot, hot mess and I shut the conversation down with Tom. And in about two minutes, I recognized what I had done, right? I was plugged in. I didn't want to give airtime. I wasn't in a place to listen. I was literally taking my emotional anxiety and upset out on him. And so I needed to come back and clean that up as a do-over really quickly. So if you find yourself in that place where you're like, ah, crap, I just did it. I attacked him. I shut the conversation down. I over-talked. Just own it in a nanosecond and create a do-over. You know what? I'm sorry. I'm noticing I talked over you. I'm noticing I just lost it there for a minute. Let me regather. And then would you be willing to continue the conversation? There's that question again, right? So you can and clean it up quickly right now. Don't let it linger. Don't defend what it is you've just done. See it, note it, express it and say, let's come back around. I'm sorry for that part. I'm trying to get better at this. Let's work together at this. And that starts to create a safe place to get better at communication. Questions are very helpful ways to do that. So let's jump into the last, the surprise technique that mm. I have no idea what this one's ah, going to be. Well, do you, Brooke? Yeah. This is the surprising one. <laughs> I'm going to invite you to create a code word or a phrase because one of the most difficult things to do when everybody starts to get fired up up is to pause. And yet it can be a life saver. There is no point in continuing when everybody is fired up. And we all know this. We can all see that the more we fight, there's not one person or both of you that goes, aha, I see the light. I finally understand where you're coming from. Like it never happens and it won't happen. And we can <laughs> count on that being the case every single time. And yet we continue to buy into the illusion that if I just say this one more point, or if I point out one more flaw, and why you're the reason to blame that we're going to have this epic moment of, oh, you're right. That's such a great point. No, you're not. That won't happen unless you're in what I call a neutral place where we have the ability to emotionally regulate ourselves. And so it's okay if you get spun up and you find that you're not in that space anymore, just own it. And the two of you can come up with a code word or a phrase to remind you of a couple of things. Number one, I care about you. The reason why I'm so spun up is because I care about this relationship and I care about you and I want it to go well. Otherwise, I wouldn't be so spun up. And how quickly, my friends, we forget when that's when we are spinning up and we are plugged in. I forget that I care. In fact, I start coming up with a rationale that entitles me to say and do all kinds of terrible things to you. The person I say I love because you said or did these things to me. And now we're to that race to the bottom again. A word that helps remind both of you that, oh, wait a minute. We like being in this relationship. We like each other. We want this to go better. We want to improve this. I care. We forget really quickly. So that word or phrase needs to remind you that I care. Number two, to not take things so seriously that there's plenty of time to gain the understanding that we're lacking right now. And it doesn't have to be done in one conversation. We can do it in many conversations, sometimes in big, serious issues. It might take us 50 rounds of coming back through this again and again and again in the pursuit of understanding before we arrive at some place we need to or can change a different direction that we can go. Take the 50 rounds because here's what I know to be true. Each and every round and pass that you do pursuing that state of neutrality and understanding will shed more and more understanding on the situation, which is just going to help us finally arrive at the place we need to go. So take the 50. So I have a question. So on this code, say we're, if things are escalating, it's not going well, then would I verbalize that code to my, to you? Yep. So come up with this word or this phrase before you're in an escalated state while you're in a good mm -hmm. space. That's important. And again, it wants to, you want it to remind you that you care and that this is a time for a pause. We need to pause because we want this to go. I would also just quickly say maybe it should be something funny and random like, 
hot dog yeah. so that when when you say it it seems like absurd and you both could take a second and laugh you know so it sure. really reset the vibration and energy of the situation no i think that's a good yeah that's some a good couples call. some couples you you need to come up with a right. word that resonates with the two of right. you that mm -hmm. communicates we need to pause because we want this to go well and i care and yeah humor is often a great interrupter but so is hey cuddle or hey love making or Hey, flower. I mean, something that evokes or children. And that might be the key word because we want this to go well for ourselves and our family, right? So find a word that's humorous, random, or find a word that takes you to that heart space. Find I, what's what works for you. I would say whatever, have it be effective. Meaning so just whatever's going to reset it quickly because that's, that's the whole point. Super tip is to quickly reset and get you both out of your funk. Oh, one that I use often with Tom is you're so sexy. You're so sexy and he'll go oh stop it i know what you're doing i know but it works and then it's like everybody can just exhale so just find one that works for the two of you talk about it dialogue about it and don't be afraid to play around with it like you can change the word once you've come up with the word if you're in the heat of the moment it didn't work acknowledge it didn't work let's find another word right. it didn't take me to that emotional place where i can get off it so spend some time and perfect something that then becomes a very powerful tool in improving your communication so that's it we've got number one just to recap here number one active listening that's so important yeah we talk about it yeah 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 we give it a lot of mouth time but give it air time that's what's important here we need to listen more and talk less to improve our communication and then that Emotional validation tip two, that's important. You're going to hear some things that you don't want to hear, but your options are I either understand it so we can improve it or I shut the conversation down and we're just going to fight about it again and again and again and again. And I would just say, just remember, it doesn't matter if that is similar for you. Let go of all that. It doesn't matter. Again, that's not even in the equation. Who cares? Gosh, well, I like, think Brooke rather said, like, that's the most ridiculous thing. I would never feel like that. Like Brooke said, it's not about you. Yeah. It's about understanding what's going on for your partner right. in that moment. And it would behoove everybody to be able to one express it and two understand it doesn't mean you are it right it just means this is something that's throwing a wrench in what it is you say you want so let's understand it and decide to, how to better dance with it and then number three sincerely asked questions are the powerhouse of communication they allow you to invite your partner into a conversation they also allow you to understand more go deeper in a conversation please help me understand more about that that's not making a lot of sense would you please share more tell me more would you please those are all really great uses of a question that's sincerely asked. And then the surprise technique that we shared with you, come up with a code word or a phrase that emotionally helps you get off it because we know that continuing in the escalation of a fight is not going to improve our communication. You're not going to see the light at the end of the day. What's going to happen is you're going to shut the conversation down more and you're going to diminish, more importantly, the emotional safety to share over and over and over again until it's non-existent. And my friends, if you don't understand much about emotional safety, you need to understand if it's not emotionally safe, nobody's going to share share anything with you. I don't care how compelling your evidence or encouragement is to say something. I will not. I will give you a play cake surface answer, but the opportunity for you to truly understand me is gone. So if you're having problems with emotional safety, which is where great communication needs to begin, then you, you got to check out that episode we did on emotional safety and it will walk you right through it. So I think that's it for today. Anything you guys want to add? I mean, these are huge, if you will. And hopefully you can use these and put them into your situation, your relationship quickly. enough. I just wanted to say for all the people who, like I said in the beginning, who are like, no, our problem is that we never talk to each other. This is why. So now that you've heard all these reasons, if you're if you don't have the permission and safety to talk about the big things, then the little things also are not talked about either. You both one or both of you shuts down and all communication stops. And then the only things you're talking about are the things you have to talk about. Did you take the trash out? Can you pick the kids up on Friday? That's what happens. It's not that you and your partner fall out of love or you just suddenly become incompatible. It's that there's a slow break down where there's no emotional safety and these communication skills are not happening where you're not giving emotional validation you're not active listening you're not asking questions and you don't have a code word so there's nothing being talked about so it's not that you run out of things to talk about it's that the way you talk about things are not healthy so this is the answer to that question yeah absolutely and if you are in a place where communication is not happening at all start with emotional safety and then as you build the emotional safety and 
implement the things that we've talked about in this episode today. Also, if you are struggling, we invite you to join the Better Love Club and you can go to thebetterloveclub.com and look at all the details. And if you would like to test us out for a Monday night class, you can do that by it's $35 to test us out for a Monday night class. We'll then apply that to your first month of the Better Love Club monthly payments. And you can do that by emailing us at love at stacybartley.com and we'll make it really easy and simple for you to join us for the next Monday night. Yeah, we just had some listeners that listened to that and they joined us on a Monday night and now they're members. So it's yeah. just come in and test us. And guess what? If you don't feel like it was a positive experience, you didn't like it, we'll refund your $35 investment. So yeah. there is no so there's risk. no risk. No risk. Yeah. yeah. But try it. Before you say you, you don't like it or you could never do that, I, to be fair, you've never experienced it. So at least experience mm-hmm. it and then let them let us know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yep. we've got a whole pillar dedicated to communication here. My greatest advice to you is if you're in a place where the communication is not going well and it's shut down, don't wait because it's not going to improve. The way to improve relationships is through the lens of communication. That's why all 2,000 participants said our biggest problem is communication. Yeah, you're right, but not for the reasons you think. There's other components that go into just forcing yourself or your partner to talk, (laughs) as we've highlighted here today. And there's many, many nuances beyond this when we get masterful at the things we've talked about. This is the basics. And then we can start stacking on how you say it and the frameworks necessary to organize what you need to say in a way that it can be heard, but we can't even go there until we get some of these basic things foundationally implemented into your relationship. So reach out to us, get some help and get some support. We would love to be that place of refuge for you to help you improve your relationship. You deserve that. Absolutely do. All right, let's have a little bit of fun. We promise that in each and every episode. And what we mean by fun is just switching it up a little bit. Give yourself something that you can do where you put your problems on the shelf and you remember and remind yourself, I like this person. I like being around this person. We can create some moments that impact us positively, even though we're going through a challenging time. And so I'm going to take you back in today's follow the fun moment to a place where maybe you were in first or second grade and you had this little thing called show and tell. Oh boy. Wow. (laughs) For most of us, it evokes this emotional response of, wow. Yeah. When you bring it, you'd bring it like in a little special box, right? Yeah, so, we just brought in a paper bag back I remember day. like a little special box, which is, I don't remember that really. You were really excited. And didn't we I think certain days, little Johnny's turn was show and tell, and then it was Freddie's and Joey's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there, you had two or three people that would bring in their special little thing that they had selected to share with the class. And do you remember when it was your turn? Oh, yeah. Like how much thought and care you'd put into what you were going to actually oh, yeah. spring on somebody. And it was always something that was really important and valuable to you. That's so, why you put in a special box. Yes. And I remember... I remember one of my, I don't, I'm going to share one of my daughter Brills. She had this epic fishing trip with her dad and she was so proud of her fish that she decided to take her frozen fish to show and tell. (laughs) And unfortunately, before they could get to the show and tell, it had melted in her backpack and it started to smell (laughs) like Unfortunately, show and tell that day was later in the afternoon and nine in the morning. Dang it. And so, and you remember being on the receiving side, right? What are they going to show us? And what is it going to be? And where is it going to take us? Smelly fish. Yeah, that day it took us to smelly fish. I want you to know that this works for adults too. Like being able to share epic things that are important and valuable to us evoke that same emotion, even though we're not in second grade anymore. We're adult. And so I want to invite you to pick out some photos or some videos of your favorite memories this week and have a show and tell in your own home. Share these things with each other and say, Oh, this is the moment. Oh, I love this. You know what was going on for me? This is why I love this. This is why this is so valuable to me. Let me share with you something that is important and valuable to me that means something to me. And then you give each other a turn to do that. Two, three, four videos, however long you want to do some show and tell. Take an opportunity and create an opportunity for you to do a little show and tell over a wonderful meal. And that will create such a wonderful experience of connection and validation for each of you. It's going to take you back to second grade. I promise. It's going to put a smile on your face and make everybody feel really good about the opportunity to share these things with you. The song that I've selected for today's episode is a Kalina. She has a song called Love Language, which I just thought was so appropriate for our episode on communication today. In her song, she talks about be patient with me. I want to be fluent in your love language and not get lost in the translation. And that really is the goal when it comes to communication. I can't say it enough. It's the pursuit understanding not who's right and who's wrong and whose fault this is. 
that's typically that's where we go in our communication pursuits is trying to figure out who's to blame for the challenges and the emotional experiences I'm having. And instead, we need to get fluent in each other's love language beyond physical touch, affection, those kinds of things. I need to get fluent in how you feel and where you go when X happens. That's my opportunity. And it's my opportunity to discover those things for myself. So you can listen to this week's song along with all of our entire playlist on our website, our podcast page, or you can find it on the Spotify playlist at Love Shack Live playlist. We just put this together for yet another added layer of experience. We want you to feel the conversation that we've attempted to have here with you today, as well as we just like music. So we want to be able to share that with you for a little bit of fun. All right, that's it for this week's episode of Love Shack Live. And if by chance you need help and support in your relationship, we would love for you to consider this a great place to begin the journey. And if you have a conversation you would like to have here inside of the Love Shack, we would love to hear from you. Don't hesitate to reach out, ask your questions and engage with us. I promise we'll get back to you. It might take us a minute, but I promise we're very passionate about communicating with you. So just give us a few minutes to reply and I promise you will. And listen, I'm going to invite you to also like, comment and subscribe to our podcast for more information on relationship advice. And we look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Bye-bye for now. All right, it's time to leave the Love Shack. But before we part ways, we want you to know our door is always open and we'll leave the porch light on, ready to welcome you back whenever you need a dose of relationship wisdom. For more resources and tools, visit us at loveshacklive.com.